everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here my name's Alexa Ray and welcome to another video I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad you clicked on today's video I am so excited we haven't done one of these videos on my channel in such a long time and you guys have probably been waiting for one of these for a while I think the last book haul I did on my channel was believe early December it was my last book haul of 2022 and going into 2023 I really wanted to put myself on a book buying ban because I just have so many physical books on my TBR and I was like you know I need to stop I need to stop buying books I need to tackle the ones I already have in my library at home so I took a little break from buying books I mean I bought like one or two here and there but haven't done like a really big book haul in such a long time. That is what we are doing today. I'm doing a little Amazon book haul for you guys. I... <laughs> I already took all the books out of the boxes because I just couldn't help myself and they came over a span of like a week so every time I got box in the mail I try to not touch it but I couldn't help myself so I opened all the books and I have them all right here I'm so excited to share them with you guys today I picked up some amazing books that I have heard such incredible things about a lot of them are books that you guys have recommended to me that I've had friends recommend to me book series that I've been dying to get my hands on I picked up some incredible books and I'm going to be sharing them all with you in today's video. So I'm not going to keep you guys waiting too much longer. We are going to jump right into it and I also forgot to mention the main reason for me actually doing like this massive Amazon book haul is I'm planning on rearranging and redoing my bookshelves out in my living room. I wanted to get the rest of the books that I had on like my wish list before I did that because I want to make sure I have room for every single book and like display them all cutesy. So that's another reason why I'm went and bought all these books. We are gonna hop right into it. I guess I'll start with this one because it's just like sitting in front of me. When I bought this, I didn't realize it was going to be this big chunker. So Binding 13, this is by Chloe Walsh and it's the Boys of Tommen, book one. Tommen, Tommen. You guys will have to let me know down below. I'm not quite sure. We have Binding 13, this is book one in the series. I have recently seen so many people rave about this book series and I've actually had a lot of people in my comments saying I should definitely check it out have to say a little intimidated this is a very chunky book for me and the pages are also like massive I don't know if you guys can tell but this is kind of a big book so it's a bit intimidating but I've heard incredible things about this book I'm really excited to start it a lot of people say that you shouldn't let the size intimidate you too much because the story is just so worth it and it's so incredible I have to say too I actually don't mind this cover you guys already know real people on book covers are kind of cringe to me but I'm not like too upset with this one. I only ordered book one in the series two because I really wanted to make sure that I would be into it and I'd be able to keep going in the series before I bought all the other books because they are a little bit pricey. I think they're like $20 or something. The only thing I do know about this is that it's a college rugby romance, which is really interesting. That's one sport I never really read a romance about. It says falling into a complicated friendship and grappling with their undeniable chemistry. Johnny and Shannon must face the obstacles that threaten their relationship. Two teenagers from opposite sides of the tracks collide. Friendship, first love, rising fame, horrifying secrets, and pain all fuel together in Binding 13. Seems like I'm going to be feeling all of the emotions in this book. If you have read this book, comment down below and let me know what you thought of it, if you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it. I've only seen like really positive things about this and I've seen so many other booktubers and people talk about it. I'm excited, a little nervous because of the size, but overall pretty excited for it. We're just gonna keep going in the sport romances and next up we have say you swear this is by megan brandy love this cover i just love the purple the pink the blue i like how they're all clashing together and i don't know i just think this is like a really pretty cover so there's a football on the cover so it's gonna be a football romance this is another book i've seen so many people rave about lately and i'm trying to get more into sport romances this year oh oh i hate it this isn't this isn't it for me why? It's just another book I've heard so many incredible things about and I wanted to pick up and give it a try. It is another chunky book. What are you gonna do? I feel like the best books are usually the chunky ones because there's so much detail and storyline to them. For years I've dreamt of what college life could bring and while some things changed there was always one constant. It didn't matter how wild I allowed my imagination to run. It always led me to the same place in the end. It led me to him. My future was clear and he was it until suddenly he wasn't. Now I'm a shell of who I was on a path too blurry to follow and I see no way out. 
out. They say first loves last forever. That's exactly what I'm afraid of. Ooh, so it's gonna be a first love trope. I'm pretty sure these are the only two sports romance books I picked up. I've just seen so many positive things about the both of them lately and I really wanted to try them out. I think their spines are also like really pretty. Next up I have In a Jam by Kate Canterbury. This is the cutest book cover I've ever seen. It just has little raspberries all over it and then we have like what could be a picnic blanket as the spine. Everything about this book just seems absolutely adorable to me. This is another book that I've seen so many people rave about more recently than before so I'm really excited to give it a try and I just know like a ton of my friends who have read it and absolutely adored this story so I'm really excited to see what this is all about. One jilted bride who didn't see it coming, one single dad who didn't sign up for this. Single dad trope okay one year to get married or lose the family farm when shay's step-grandmother died she left shay a tulip farm under two conditions first shay had to move home to the small town of friendship rhode island second and most problematic since her fiance just called off the wedding shay must be married within one year marriage is the last thing in the world shay wants but she'll do anything to save the only real home she's ever known noah loved shay back in high school not that he ever told her he was too shy too awkward too painfully uncool to ask out the beautiful popular girl a lifetime later noah is a single dad to his niece and has his hands full running the family business. That old crush is the farthest thing from his mind until she returns to their hometown and turns his life upside down. This sounds absolutely adorable. I think this is gonna be like the perfect little read for spring too. It kind of gives me spring vibes. Next up I have My Dark Romeo. This was actually written by two authors. It says Parker S. Huntington and then LJ Shen. I actually had this recommended to me in my Amazon cart. I saw this and I was immediately drawn to the cover of it. I just thought it was so pretty. Chapter dividers are also so cute. Again, I love when books do this and I've actually noticed it more recently. I have so many books that do this and I love it so, so much. I can't say that like I haven't seen this on social media because I feel like I definitely have. I do love the vibes of it. I love the title, My Dark Romeo. Definitely referencing Romeo and Juliet. I literally spent four years studying Shakespeare and rereading Romeo and Juliet so many times. I've read so many different versions of it. I've seen so many Many different movie versions of it. Huge Romeo and Juliet girly over here and I'm excited to see like what this is going to be about. Some Romeos deserve to die. It was supposed to be a harmless kiss at a lavish debutante ball. A clandestine moment with a handsome stranger. But unlike his namesake, my Romeo isn't driven by love. He's fueled by revenge. I'm so excited for this. To him, I'm a chess piece, leverage, his rival's betrothed. To me, he is a man deserving a poison, a dark prince I refuse to marry. This is getting me right now. He thinks I'll accept my fate while I plan to rewrite it. And in my story, Juliet doesn't die, but Romeo, he perishes. I am actually so freaking excited for this. Next up, I have Ignite Me by Tara Moffey. If you guys have been keeping up with my previous videos on my channel, if you're up to date on my reading vlogs, you guys know. I immediately was obsessed with that book. I had never read a distorted world romance fantasy book like that before so it was super new to me I was obsessed with the whole idea the whole concept of the story can we just talk about the love triangle in this series okay we're looking at Juliet Adam and Warner Adam is Juliet's first love and Warner is just someone who has loved Juliet since day one even when she hated him and despised him Warner still wanted her no matter what this love triangle is crazy I remember thinking this when I was reading book one I never knew Warner was even an option in the series because he is kind of he's kind of spicy he's kind of like the bad boy in the story and book one he's just honestly like insufferable I could not believe some of the things he was doing I was like okay no I'm team Adam all the way and then we read Warner's point of view right after book one not what I expected at all and then going into unravel me which is book two I was blown away everything changed it was like the turning point for me when I literally switched from team Adam Adam and I switched to Team Warner and now we are on to Ignite Me. This is book three in the Shatter Me series and this is the book that everybody raves about. Everyone's like, Ignite Me is my favorite book out of the entire series. You're gonna love it. You're gonna be obsessed with it. This is the book that really makes Warner shine and it kind of just pulls everything together. So I am really, really excited for this one. I'll read the little blurb on the back for you guys. The fate of Omega Point is unknown. Everyone Juliet cares about may be dead. Now, 
Julia is the only one standing in the reestablishment's way. But to take them down as well as Anderson, the man that nearly killed her, Juliet needs the help of one person she never thought she could trust, Warner. I'm so excited for this. And as they work together, Juliet will discover that everything she thought she knew about Warner, about her abilities, and even Adam was wrong. I can't wait for this. So now we're gonna start hopping in to a book series that I actually picked up. I'm like so excited for these. First series I have to share with you is The Brutal Birthright Series by Sophie Lark. And I've actually already read The Brutal Prince. This was my first read of 2023. And it's also my first Sophie Lark book. Oh my gosh, these are incredible. They are essentially dark romances that revolve around mafia family and every sibling in the family is finding love. This book tells the story of Ada and Cal. Ada is the youngest gallo and she winds up being put into an arranged marriage with Cal who comes from an Irish mob family and their story was just so, it was so good. It was an enemies to lovers, it was a one bed trope, it was an arranged marriage trope and I just, I loved it so much. I wound up reading that one on my Kindle because it was available on Kindle Unlimited and these are all actually available on Kindle Unlimited. I wound up picking up four books in the series. I'm missing the last two books and it's because I couldn't find the new covers of the last two books yet. So I wound up buying these physical copies because I am obsessed with these covers. I think they are so beautiful. They're so aesthetic. I'm just like obsessed with them. And then the spines are also absolutely gorgeous. And I think they're gonna look so beautiful on my bookshelf. I can't wait to continue on in the series as well because I've only read book one, but I just know I'm gonna love the rest of the books because I really enjoyed Sophie Lark's writing style. She has a very easygoing writing style. It's very fast paced. I was never bored. The Brutal Prince is the first one. I think this is absolutely stunning. Every chapter like has the cover print on it, but it's just a little faded and I just think it's absolutely stunning. Book two in the series is Stolen Air. I absolutely love the vibes of this one. We have a ballerina on it. Stop. I'm actually so happy right now. I didn't know the books had these. So I also noticed when I was reading book one on my Kindle, every so often in between chapters, there would actually be a picture, an illustration of what was going on in the story so far. And the books actually have the illustrations in them as well. So that is really, really cool. I didn't know that was going to be a part of these. And that just made me so much more excited to read them. So this is going to be the story of Nessa and Mika. Go. Then we go on to Savage Lover. I am obsessed. Stop. I love this cover so much. This is going to tell the story of Camille and Nero Gallo. Oh my gosh, look at these chapters. They are so stunning. And then the last book I have in that series is Bloody Heart. This one tells the story of Simone and Dante. Oh, I'm so excited for Dante's story. I highly recommend Sophie Lark books if you're looking to get into dark romance because I feel like they're dark romances but they're not like the darkest romances I've read. They're really easy going and I think they're a really good intro into the genre. Also just gorgeous covers. I am absolutely obsessed with these. I cannot wait to have them on my bookshelf. The next two books I have are also part of a series. You guys already know what this series is. So I have Fuel the Fire and Long Way Down. These are by Krista and Becca Ritchie. These are a part of the Addicted to You and Callaway Sister series, but these are actually far down in the series. This is the recommended reading order for the series. It goes Addicted to You, Ricochet, Addicted for Now. I have all three of those books. And then we jump in to the Callaway Sister series, book one, which is Kiss the Sky. I actually did just buy that book like a few months ago from Barnes, but it's the version with the guy on the cover so like the real person and I really want this version but it's not available on Amazon yet so. so I'm hoping I'm able to get my hands on that cover and then after Kiss the Sky we go to Hot House Flower which is book two in the Callaway Sister series. I also didn't get that one because that cover is not available till June. Then we jump back into the addicted books. We go to Thrive, Addicted After All. Then we get into Fuel the Fire and Long Way Down. So I picked these books up because I'm nervous they're gonna go out of stock soon. And I love these covers so much. They are absolutely gorgeous. I really just wanna collect the entire series with these covers. I think they're just so beautiful. People are literally selling their copies for hundreds of dollars online. I'm just gonna try and be patient and wait until <laughs> they become insane 
stock again. If you're not familiar with this series, I did a reading vlog for book one and book two. They're already on my channel. And then I'm currently reading book three in the series, which is Addicted for Now. Feel the Fire is Rose and Connor. And then Long Way Down is Rike and Daisy. Kiss the Sky and Hot House Flower is also like their stories. These are their stories after those books. Yeah, decided to pick them up. I'm also just so excited to jump into the Calloway Sister series. So many people rave about Rose and Connor. They rave about Daisy and Reich, and I just cannot wait to finally read their stories because I love Lily and Lo. I'm just really excited for the enemies to lovers trope between Connor and Rose, and then Daisy and Reich just seem like the cutest, most adventurous couple. Last but not least, we have the final book series I picked up. I'm also missing a book out of this series because it wasn't yet available, so hopefully I can get my hands on it soon. This book series is a series that has been so highly recommended to me on my channel for probably over a year now and I recently read the Chestnut Spring series and I rave about that series. It's one of my favorite book series I've read so far this year. I'm obsessed with that series. I'm obsessed with the characters, the world. I just want to live in those books. So in the comments under that video a lot of you had recommended the Edens to me and a lot of you said that this book series gives off like the same type of vibe. I decided to take a chance and I ordered the first four books in the series. I'm very, very excited about it. I do think the covers of these books are also gorgeous in my opinion. I love the different colors and I think the spines are also really cool. I don't know too much about this series. I just know that you guys said, oh, it has similar vibes to the Chestnut Spring series. You should read it. So I was like, oh, the first book is Indigo Ridge. I love the aesthetic. Like I know I say I don't like real people on the covers of books, but this is kind of a vibe. Winslow Covington believes in life, liberty, and the letter of the law. As Quincy Montana's new chief of police, she's determined to prove herself to the community and show them she didn't earn her position because her grandfather is the mayor. According to her pops, all she has to do is earn favor with the Edens. But winning over the town's founding family might have been easier if not for her one night stand with their oldest son. In her defense, it was her first night in town and she didn't realize that the rugged and charming man who wooed her into bed was Quincy royalty. Sleeping with Griffin Eden was a huge mistake, the one she's trying to forget. He's insufferable, arrogant, and keeps reminding everyone that she's an outsider. Winslow does her best to avoid Griffin, but when a woman is found dead on Eden property, the two of them have no choice but to cross paths. As clues to the murder lead to one of Quincy's own, Griffin realizes Winslow is more than he gave her credit for. Beautiful and intelligent, she proves hard to resist for him and the killer. I don't actually know if they are mystery thriller romances, but that's kind of spooky. There's a dead body found on Eden property, and it seems like the whole book kind of revolves around her trying to figure out what happened, but also her and Griffin are like butting heads. That's really interesting. Did not see that coming. Next up we have Juniper Hill. I love this green color. It's so cool. Memphis Ward arrives in Quincy, Montana on the fifth worst day of her life. She needs a shower. She needs a snack. She needs some sanity because moving across the country with her newborn baby is by far the craziest thing she's ever done. But maybe it takes a little crazy to build a good life. If putting the past behind her requires a thousand miles in a new town, she'll do it if it means a better future for her son, even if it requires setting aside the glamour of her former life, even if it requires working as a housekeeper at the Eloise Inn and living in an apartment above the garage. It's there on the fifth worst day of her life that she meets the handsomest man she's ever laid eyes on. <laughs> the handsomest man. <laughs> Knox Eden is a beautiful, sinful dream, a chef and her temporary landlord. With his sharp stubble jaw and tattooed arms, he's raw and rugged in everything she's never had and never will. Because after the first worst day of her life, Memphis learned a good life requires giving up on her dreams too. And a man like Knox Eden will only ever be a dream. I love that he's a chef and that he has tattoos. So next up we have Garnet Flat. Talia Eden loved Foster Madden for one year, two months, and 11 days. It was on day 438 that her love died. The day he chose to marry her best friend, the day she vowed never to think of Foster again. Again. That is not a very good best friend then. Until years later when he has the audacity to show up in her small hometown of Quincy begging for her help. The ink on his divorce papers is barely dry yet he comes armed with apologies and promises. She knows it's all a ploy. Foster is the king of games and secrets but he's got delusions the size of Montana if he thinks she'll help him train for a world championship 
fight. Except Talia has forgotten exactly what made Foster famous. The man has dedicated his life to victory. He's steadfast, he's determined, and he won't stop fighting until he's won her heart. I feel like these books are all over the place, and I love that. Last but not least, we have Jasper Vale, and I love the yellow cover. Eloise Eden's pride and joy is her family's hotel in Quincy, Montana. Her lifelong dream is to own the Eloise Inn. All she has to do is prove to her parents that she's responsible. That her days of being duped and making reckless decisions are history. She's so close, she can taste it. Until after one weekend in Las Vegas, she comes home married to a stranger. <laughs> I'm gonna love this series. I can already tell I'm going to be obsessed with these books and these characters, and I feel like I'm going to want to live in this world because it's all over the place. Jasper must have put her under a spell with those soul deep eyes because after a single night together, they woke up husband and wife. Her only hope is to keep their marriage a secret until it's annulled. Then she'll pretend it never happened. Except Jasper begs her to stay married, to fake it for three months so she can accompany him to a wedding. Maybe she's lost her mind to agree, but her brooding husband seems desperate. It's only three months, right? Then she'll say goodbye to Jasper Vale and with any luck, hello to her new hotel. Seems like there's a little bit more to the story there. But that is actually all for the book haul today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and for letting me share all the new books I just bought. I am so, so excited for these. And I have to say, I didn't feel too guilty ordering new books because I have actually made it through a big chunk of my physical TBR. I'm super proud of myself. I've actually read almost 30 books so far this year. My goal for 2023 is to read a total of 50 books. We're more than halfway there and we're not even halfway through the year yet. I feel like we're gonna have a really good reading year and I'm excited to see how many books over my goal I end up reading because I think that's gonna be really cool. If you're interested, definitely go check out previous reading vlogs of mine because like I said, I do reading vlogs for literally every single book I read on my channel and stay tuned for my bookshelf organization video because that's going to go up shortly after this one because I plan on doing my bookshelves tomorrow. I'm so, so excited because I have so many new books to add on to my shelf. So if you guys want to see a little bookshelf organization, a little bookshelf tour, I'm also going to be sharing every book I own in that video. Definitely stay tuned for that and subscribe down below if you're not already. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I feel like this was a very well-needed, chill, sit-down video and I had so much fun talking to you guys about all the new books I bought. Also, this is probably going to be out right before I actually launch my clothing brand. This weekend, I am launching a clothing brand and our first collection is going to be Just a Girl and Her Books. I'll have my website linked down below and if you guys click it, you can sign up for emails. You'll get promo emails, discounts, you'll get early news on when we're launching and what we're launching. So definitely go sign up for my email list down below. I am so excited to share this collection with you guys and I know you guys are going to absolutely love it too. I cannot thank you guys enough for everything you do, for hanging out with me every day, talking about books. This is all possible because of you guys and I'm just so incredibly grateful for each and every one of you. I love each and every one of you so, so much and I'm just so excited to see what the future has in store for us. But I am going to stop rambling and chewing your ears off. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video.